if we used to go one on one and then add 66 and two thirds percents, I got 141 and two thirds chance of winning at sacrifice. See, Joe, the numbers don't lie. Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and we've been take. I had some requests out. You know, what did the viewers want us to talk about? And one of the things I saw a couple of times was the hype about Image Comics when it first got rolled out. You know, obviously a lot of the the bigger name artists over at Marvel Comics decided to uh, to take their to take their skills and to create their own company, and they end up creating uh, you know essentially six different studios: Todd McFarlane Productions, Wildstorm. Productions, Highbrow Entertainment, Shadowline, Top Cow Productions, Extreme Studios. And there was a lot of hype. And at one time, at one point, the sales even eclipsed DC Comics for a very short period of time. So I wanted to bring my good friends, comic book writer, award-winning editor Joe Corallo and Yul Carter from Fantastic Comics to talk about Image Comics, the rollout, the hype, and what happened there. How you doing, Joe? I'm all right, Wes. How are you? I'm doing great. And Yul, how are you doing? Uh, excellent. I love talking about image, especially in the nineties. Those Wartists. Oh, they changed everything. Did they really change everything? What was your impression when Image Comics got started out? And what were you expecting to receive from them? Um, I I thought it was exciting and I, I gotta let you know, I was already at the age where I was kind of bouncing off of I kind of always have been, you know, I can stick with superhero comics or or move on to other things or other, you know, other companies, not just Marvel and DC, but it was on a, on a you know, you could not ignore <laughs> the fact that these two or four major guys plus, or four or five major guys are leaving Marvel and they're going to start their own company. Um, you know, they didn't do anything new once they got there. And once they got there, they seemed to be just doing what they already were doing. Mark Silvestri was doing a, x-men style book they're even called mutants in there jim lee yeah, has cyber a, force yeah cyber force jim yes. lee has uh wild catch which is a team of super powered people um young blood is rob liefeld's not x-force or not whatever he was going to do for malibu just before he started young blood and uh you know all these guys were doing like knock oh, savage dragon eric larson always wanted to do the hulk Mm -hmm. And here he is doing this big green character who was a, <laughs> um, a, a, a little children's, uh, a child's Hulk knockoff. And here he is making yeah. his comic book. And there you go. Image. Boom. Yeah. That's what Image was. Well, yeah. also, uh, keep in mind, uh, Spawn, very close to Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Where Where is Spawn going to go on the shelf? At, at most shops you, you know if, if you're doing alphabetical order it, it, mm -hmm. it's possible they you know divide up into you know uh, different publishers but it it made sense and then you had you know young bloods not that far away from x <laughs> no not at all you know uh, they they're they, they were smart <laughs> yeah wild cats you kind of well, like pincer yeah. You know, you, you, you pincer those, those x -Men titles. Like, they, that was all in, intentional. Savage Dragon, also not that far from Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. um, Another book that Eric Larson did a long time. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, no you know, the thing about Spawn was that his, his look for me personally always looked like the Prowler. I've seen a lot of people talking about that now. Another yeah. Spider-Man villain yeah. uh, created by John Romita or John Romita Jr., if the mm -hmm. if you know the legend <laughs> yes. so like it's just um they again they were very smart in the way they approached it image was the name of their company and for sure it was definitely what they were going for as like a philosophy also and joe it seemed like you know they knew who their audience was you know they were yeah. recording their audience that were into really bombastic art style that they brought in vogue over at marvel comics and you know that you needed some similar characters to you know, similar covers to kind of draw the eyes over and jump on these new titles, and it was hot as ever. From what I understand, like people were ordering the hell out of these comic books as far as retailers. Everyone was excited for. Them. Yeah, well, I mean, you're talking about the group of creators who, uh, at the time, right before they left, I, I believe, and going into shortly after they left, I, I believe what what was said was if you separated the x books out of marvel that group of books alone would have been the number four publisher in the u.s mm -hmm. 
like ju just the that cluster of, of books that's how much they were selling and spider-man with todd was the first time i i think it maybe took three years or it might have been under three years with todd on the book where spider-man outsold x-men at times when that had never happened uh, in the eighties, like, like Spider-Man became just a book that was taken for granted, uh, which, which is a shame because uh, Tom DeFalco and Ron friends and some others, that, I, I feel like that all got memory hold and it's not as bad as uh, pe people act like nothing happened between Roger Stern and, and Todd McFarlane, but there, there was some good stuff in there, but, but yeah, these are the people who completely changed the sales landscape. So they knew who the customers were because the customers were coming for them. Mm-hmm. And they kind of gave them all the power. Really, Yule, how many how many artists did uh, Todd McFarlane screw over illustrating Spider-Man after him? <laughs> as far as having to continue drawing web that way? Yes. He used, like every thread was in there. Like geez. I think Steve Ditko started this whole whole ball rolling though, you know, what with all the lines and the wet the the you know in the face and uh, the web underneath the the arms and everything like that. But McFarlane for sure took it to the next level. But I don't know if all you have to do is kind of do some some uh, swirls and Mark Bagley got it done. <laughs> yeah, I, I, but when you when you think about how Todd can fundamentally change the character, it's it's so interesting because every part of the story that made Image, which I think which is a narrative to this day, uh, with creators is don't listen to the industry insiders and all that. And Jim Salakrup will even talk about how Todd really reinvigorated him because he had been, you know, cog in the wheel for almost two decades at that point. And finally, there was someone who was asking those questions like, well, why do we have to draw it like this? Why can't we do something more dynamic? Why can't we, you know, the webbing, like, why can't we do something more visually interesting instead of it's just like, you know, line and, there you go and what you ended up uh, creating was was the sort of environment that could only exist when jim shooters was out mm -hmm. uh which which is another important thing because as, as much as everyone praises you know jim shooter this would never have happened under jim shooter if he had stayed longer and I've always been a fan of comic book illustrators that will um, break out of the boxes. Like in mm -hmm. Alex Nino, he might not even have uh, gutters in his mm -hmm. comic book pages. Uh, I always find that like the pages I'm 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 into are like things that just kind of oh you know Barry Barry Allen's fist is flying through the page, or even uh, Francis Manipal doing his best Will Eisner stuff on the mm -hmm. Flash, and you know things like that, and. There were times in the past when, you know, Carmine Infantino was the new hot. And the thing is, is it, it took a long time for these editors, like you said, that are stuck in the business for so long. This is the way we do it. Yeah. This is how you get things done. You know, uh, get it done. Uh, we'll get the inker to fix it and uh, we'll yep. move on to the next thing. And but Todd, <laughs> his doing that and being exciting and Rob's also especially like you can almost see it in Mark Sylvester. He's still the old school guy that knows how to put some flash on stuff. But Tom McFarlane is not very great at laying out pages. Sure. And I, I think Rob actually is better. If you're talking about the movement uh, of a comic book and mm -hmm. uh, engaging readers, but Todd McFarlane's more of, Hey, I'll just put this like really arty pose piece in here and you have a couple inset panels and oh, I'll call it a day. <laughs> you know? Sure. You know, and and it took a while for Todd to get the book, you know, Spider-Man, how he wanted it to, because he kept getting inkers, you know, like Bob McCloud. I, I have nothing bad to say about Bob McCloud. He's inked some of the best comics ever. Um, but you could you could totally understand a lot of these inkers when they got Todd's stuff were like, oh, my God, I got to fix this. And, <laughs> and and they kept, you know, fixing what Todd was trying to change about the comics. And it took a while before uh, he was able to just ink his own work, uh, which he did towards the end of, of his Spider-Man, because 
he he just was not satisfied and there was no way they could properly convey to these inkers you 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 don't ruin that part because it's just ingrained it's like no this isn't anatomy this isn't this and that i gotta i gotta erase things and and fix these these characters so it, it really took to later before he was able to do that and that in a way, again, like he then learned to ink himself to get his art how he wanted it to and just use that to move over to image. No, so well, talking about oh, I- image, uh, you know, we, we've, we've made some interesting points here. And really, they, they had the art style, mm-hmm. the, the visually appealing art style that brought people to the comic book. But they forgot to bring some of that old school knowledge with them as far as like meeting deadlines, as far as <laughs> writing scripts, writing dialogue and, uh, you know, probably not bringing somebody maybe they trusted or maybe could stand somebody that had some older school ideas on how to, how to, um, you know, schedule these things out kind of ended up kind of screwing them over because from what I understand you, they could not meet deadlines almost from the get go. Yeah. Well, uh, you have these guys that left a company for various reasons. Some just because, you know, like, Oh, (laughs) these, these hot young guys are starting this thing and I'm going to, I'm going to tag along, uh, Valentina. <laughs> uh, and no, uh, but jokingly, but, um, he was probably the only guy that really had a sense of how to, how to run a book on his own because of his previous successes. And, um, and yeah, Todd McFarlane was like the only guy that got anything out even close to monthly. And I think it was, and he would say, Oh, it's because these other things are late. It's making me look better. But uh, what, like every six or seven weeks, there would be a brand new spawn. Um, administration, if you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know how to talk to a printer and get what you want done for the first time, you know, I've just been drawing pages and maybe I just started scripting stuff recently and I know everything about putting a book together except for uh, getting the colors put in and except talking logistics. to a printer and logistics, <laughs> all that stuff, exactly. <laughs> And on top of it, I'm a hype man for my own, not only for the company, but also my own studio. I'm trying to get other people involved. They're going to do things like me who aren't polished at all either. It's going to take a while. And and I'm Rob Liefeld, and I got 20 different books I want to put out. Of this and I got my Calvin yeah. Klein campaign going on, and I got to sell pizzas. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, those those jeans, the uh, being on Dennis Miller, uh, just, just all that stuff, you know, having... Uh, you know, meetings with like Tom Cruise about picking up IP. Uh, it, it was crazy. And uh, another thing that kind of gets memory hold a little bit is like a lot of them had TV shows and video games. I mean, Wildcats, Savage Dragon, um, you know, other than Spawn uh, were were getting picked up and this and that all, all over the place. It was it was a big to do. Um, yeah. And. Yeah, like you were kind of leading to Wes. You started getting people like Alan Moore involved. You know, writing. They had to and, bring in some real writers. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, they, I think they figured in. out really fast that the guys like sitting sleeping on my couch or my buddy from high school might not have been the best choice to be scripting this stuff. Sure. Uh, and also, they eventually, pretty quickly, if I remember correctly, I think their first big hire at Image was Larry Martyr. Mm -hmm. Uh, the guy who did bean world and he was kind of the guy that got the ship at least headed in the right direction. Uh, while those guys were still at the company, if I'm not mistaken. So that's a cool thing. (laughs) They're they're just number ones and number twos of image comics, just everywhere across the country because they printed them so heavily. But by the time they came out, people forgotten that they were coming out. Like they hype, hype was lost a lot of times by the time, by the time they delivered. Yeah, and also the uh, subpar quality of anything that the main guys weren't doing. So going back to Liefeld and his multiple titles, you had guys that are going to be good now, or at least you know important people in other art industries, like Dan Fraga and Merritt Michaels, and you know Jim Lee uh, had all sorts of guys like Tony. Well, maybe Tony Daniel was over at Top Cow. I can't remember. You know yeah. all these guys, and initially. And maybe Tony Daniels a little harsh. Um, You know, their stuff originally wasn't all that great. So not only is it late coming out, and then when it finally does, it's like, oh, this is a Rob Liefeld knockoff. And if you're the kind of person that's like, I don't like Rob Liefeld to begin with, 
there's nothing of quality here. And then you're sitting on yeah. a bunch of brigades or uh, blood strike or whatever it may be, depending on the story, of course. Yeah, but but they everybody did. had those. Yeah, I mean, yeah, lot, lots of late comics, lots of uh, major careers were, were starting. I mean, Jim Lee doesn't become uh, one of the highest people at DC without breaking away to be one of the image founders. Uh, I mean, Mark Silvestri, Mark Silvestri, I feel, gets talked about the least in a way of, of like the people who really should be talked about. Because um, what he did with Top Cow, I mean, he started, I, I believe David Finch uh, got his start at Top Cow. Uh, Michael yeah, Turner. Right? Michael Michael Turner got his start there. Oh. And, um, you know, also Teeny Howard got her start at. Did uh, she? What Top is she? What, she which she, she, I, I, she it might have been Witchblade. She got, um, she got was me. one of the early uh, talent hunt winners. Mm. And uh, that that launched her career. So if you're a big fan of Image, you you helped make that happen. <laughs> you, so, you made X Corp. <laughs> no, no, no. Kidding aside, I love TD. She's, she, she's great. But also, like, uh, Steve Fox uh, got his start uh, through uh, the Image Talent Hunt, and he's the editor now on uh, Department of Truth for, for James uh, Tynan. There over was it. a Hickman book also, if I remember correctly. They were doing a Talent Hunt, and I think he did one of those also. I yeah. could be wrong. And, uh, oh, uh, Brian Edward Hill, his, his mm -hmm. comics, uh, you know, started over there. So, like, Mark Silvestri has really uh, contributed a lot that's still uh, a big part of comics. So this, I, I think uh, Ken Rockefeller was also oh, nice. uh, Top Cow. So, and like, Witchblade I'll, was a TV show also. And, yeah, and Witchblade was, was uh, a live-action show. I think it got to season two also. Yeah. I think there were yeah. uh, two seasons. Um you know, it kept Ron Mars going for a long time. <laughs> Top Cow was, he was pumping out a lot of Top Cow books. Um, what, uh, you know, Tim Seeley did a Witchblade run. That was, yeah. uh, that wasn't bad. I, I, I enjoyed that run. But um, it's crazy but the amount then, of talent yeah. that ended up coming out of there. Even Wild Storm, you're talking about like uh, your, yeah. your Brett Booth, J. Scott Campbell, later on Eric Kennedy, who's been on the channel. There's, there's a lot of guys that, that came sure. out of all those studios and they really wanted to, to produce new talent but probably right out the gate wasn't the time to do it they, they probably should have yeah. brought in the alan moores and stuff initially because after that you know the the shines off off the off the brand and off the studios sure. because you haven't made deadlines and the quality wasn't quite there although you know spawn's still going on now in, in savage dragon but sure and uh, also uh, the darkness had a video game i forgot about that oh, damn. that was uh, so yeah like top cow and mark silvestri was, was, did a lot that uh, I, I think gets uh, maybe overlooked for for like Todd and Rob, uh, you know, un understandably they're both juggernauts. But one of the interesting things too is, although Image apparently never got to overcome Marvel at any point, they did outsell DC like mm -hmm. one month in the yep. early '90s. They they did it. They they were they, number they, two for a second. Yeah, and but you, yeah, they became number three, and they they've held on that is their spot yes yeah Nobody well, they, challenge them. they didn't get to number three though until more recently if I'm oh not yeah mistaken. Like, not i mean by like the mid 2000s or yeah. or so yeah but during like the second renaissance they were i, I think right. solid to come there well, because dark horse was huge th but that's it's completely the funny different thing now yeah. you'll yeah. like mm -hmm. the new image comics that we have it's not about the most bombastic amazing art that's going to blow your mind it's it's I call it Vertigo Light. It's it's a you know a, a kind of a generic art style. It, obviously, it varies from title to title, but it's it's a lot more about. I know Doc says it's all Netflix bait. You know, I guess I, we I can don't doubt about that. that. <laughs> I think it's, it's somewhere it's somewhere in between what it used to be. Vertigo, maybe Fanographic sometimes because subject matter can be different. Mm -hmm. uh, they have definitely lost their way as far as uh, what originally image. Well, maybe not. Image is all about image right it's not necessarily it's about creator owned i'm the important person that's selling this product to you mm -hmm. and you know uh tom mcfarland's still around spawn's still around savage dragon's still around mm -hmm. they still have other things like that in the in in there but ever Cyber since Force was being published just a couple years ago yeah exactly 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, those things are still coming out, but what is successful at Image for the most part, like you said, it may be Netflix bait or, or Vertigo Light. Um, but what they're doing is they're still getting established creators coming over to Image and putting out their creator-owned things. So Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips aren't going to work at Marvel and DC anymore. Yeah, and all their creator-owned stuff, and, and it, you know, they're not Todd McFarlane like you know in mm-hmm. their presentation to the people out there. But they, again, they still own their own stuff. They're still doing what they want to do, and they're putting it out there. You got your fable or fables. Saga. You got your Wicked and Divine and your sagas yep. and your things like that. And it, 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 uh, it is reminiscent of things that were popular at one time. It's good enough to be number three. I think as far as a company that doesn't own anything, it's hard to become number two for real. Yeah. Um, you think they would have had a chance if they could have met some of those deadlines and really been pumping out the books when the hype was there and really gathered or you just don't, you don't think the quality backed it up early or DC was just too much of a juggernaut to overcome. Yeah, well, you can't beat Superman and Batman in the end when DC really cares, you know, they'll do something to, you know, rival Marvel at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But drop hush. They'll do something. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, spawn is, is, uh, he's known all over the place, but Mm -hmm. he isn't Spider-Man. You know, yep. no matter where he sits on the comic book shelf, and then every other person or every other character that isn't Spawn is lesser at Image as far as the consciousness of, you know, uh, of the world is concerned. You know, there might be a Mil- Mark Miller book out there that people know because of Net- Netflix, mm-hmm. but it's not it's not the same. <laughs> It'll yeah. never be the same. And, and to sort of piggyback on that, like when Image had their like second renaissance. Uh, you know, with the walking dead and uh, everything that was, you know, coming from that invincible, you did have this platform. They sort of set up where, you know, now Mark Miller and Ed Brubaker and other people had a place to go if they felt burned or they felt like they could remember. Yeah. Rick remember uh, Hickman. Hickman. Yeah. You, you had this, this ability to to do that which if image didn't exist i don't know if some of these other publishers would have been able to provide the kind of platform they would have wanted like maybe that would have been an opening for dark horse but dark horse doesn't have that same level of of freedom they also don't have the the same karen burger line that's supposed to be like vertigo but i imagine even there there's going to be some student interference yeah i mean that you're going to have not complete control in the same way as you do with, with image. Um, and, and I mean, even vertigo vertigo put out some great books, but what, what people would talk about with, um, you know, vertigo is, you know, the contract sucks. And if it becomes a TV show, then you're really fucked <laughs> is, is was sort of the common, uh, talk about that because ultimately, you know, DC, it's like maybe they don't technically own it, but they once they, have they it, saw how so. van, valuable Sand went, Sandman universe it was sure? in the end, mm-hmm. and they realized <laughs> that the original deal made was not beneficial to them in the end. That was yeah. never going to happen again. Neil yeah. Gaiman uh, <laughs> destroyed that for other creators, and I don't yeah, blame him. Absolutely. So just to kind of wrap up this this talk about Image Comics, the early days, kind of the hype you know, did it live up to it? You know, Joe, Joe, what are your thoughts on image, you know, in the legacy that it's laid out in the, the original create or the original image seven? I mean, it's, it's tough to say because their goal was, I think their own personal freedom. So if we're talking about artists having the freedom to do what they want, they certainly met that goal. Uh, I, I think they were looking for their own personal success. It wasn't to necessarily change the entire world. It was, it would be great if they did, but I think their number one goal was we're going to control our own destiny and other people that want to join us on this journey, get to control their own destinies too. And as far as that goes, I, I think they've met that goal. Absolutely. And, you know, spawn is the longest you know, uh, selling continuously publish any any title in the history of, the, of comic books now that's it's insane that it's still going on savage dragon's still going on so there's certainly a legacy out there you'll you know what what are your thoughts just uh to wrap up this talk about image comics 
it um it definitely changed everything whether they meant it to or not as far as comics were concerned you saw marvel and dc scrambling hard for a whole decade and so where uh we've seen in videos where uh you know heroes were born and all that stuff went over to image creators so that they could get marvel comics to be a little bit more hyped up and you know that's that was an unbelievable thing. Also, uh, the the original seven creators at Image were not, you know, and don't forget Kirkman. You know, he was one of the main guys there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just joking, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, you know, these are these are like really super awesome rock stars in comics. You know, Spike Lee paid attention to Rob Liefeld, and it's like, oh my god, I can't believe it. And all that stuff. It's it 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 was such a I don't know, man. Every hour on QVC, they were selling uh, baseball cards that were signed and and Young Blood number one foil embossed signed covers and Blood Strike and all that other stuff. It was uh, quite a time, and uh, I don't know if we'll ever be able to recapture Com- that. Comic books were cool there, and they were they big really were. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna send your kids to college on this money <laughs> that you're gonna make off this stuff, and that's what that's what the '90s were all about, man. It was. It, I mean, it wasn't always good, but it was exciting. Yeah, and, <laughs> that was uh, the image. Yeah, it, it was great. There, there were other indie publishers trying creator owned stuff before this. Uh, Malibu was established a little before this and helped Image mm-hmm. become a thing because uh, it's you can't really uh, go back and call Marvel like, "Hey, by the way, since we started this company, can you like show us a few of the ropes now that we left?" Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so so Malibu helped with that. Uh, first Comics, Eclipse, uh, they, they were uh, putting out some great stuff. I mean, you had Nexus, uh, Grim, was it Grim Jack, John Sable, American Flag, like some some really good indie stuff uh, through the 80s that weren't just part of the, you know, that like uh, TMNT black and white comics uh, craze that went on then. But you, you had these uh, publishers and, uh, you know, the people that worked on them, you know, like Mike Gold over at uh, First Comics, it really helped uh, create an environment where image was feasible. You had these other companies that weren't as successful, but proved you could do it. And I don't think you have image comics without that. They may have tried, but I don't think they would have been as successful or at least had as many people having the the faith in them to do it uh without having about a decade of of other small publishers coming up and and putting stuff out with quality talent and those other uh publishers really quickly those other publishers had established veterans going and working on yeah. you know like you said john sable that was mike grill yeah and you know uh and, and if they weren't established at that time they were going to become established eventually uh yeah but howard shaken had done stuff for marvel and then he does american flag and yeah. these were the the beginnings of image and how it ultimately came about but uh yeah uh <laughs> image took it to the next level yes absolutely. absolutely they had the hype like nobody else did so therefore they probably had access to the money that you probably needed and they certainly changed the game. Thank you so much to Joe Corallo and Yule Carter for joining me talking about the Image Comics and you know, just a little look back on, on what they've meant to the industry, the, some of the rough times at the beginning, you know, why people are so excited. And uh, we'll talk to you about comics again very soon.